Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey there, fellow travelers. This is, this is gonna be good. The don'ts of visiting France. France? Hi, guys. How are you? Good, I hope. My name's Connor, if you're new. Uh, did that rhyme? France. I love France, okay? I love, the, and I mean it in, in every way, okay? Love the history, love the uh, culture, love the, uh, it's everything, okay? But something about France, they're super, this is just my experience, they are super, kind of like American in a way. Uh, 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 let me explain that. This is just me. I've only been twice in my life, okay? And not for very long, all right? Probably a total of, like, six days I've spent there in my life. So I'm judging off of that. But based on other places I visit, visited in Europe, they're very... Uh, different. Like, they, they seem to be very much want to be France more so than the other countries, which I think are a little bit more connected. The English language, for example, do not, you will find way more English speakers in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Netherlands for sure, Belgium, than you will in France, okay? They, they are very, they seem like a very proud, nationalistic kind of people, and I mean that in a good way, okay? So, I'm, I'm curious to see what the don'ts are going to be from Walter's World. Let's go. Mark here with Walter's World. Today we're here in Bordeaux, France for the don'ts of visiting France. Let's be honest, there's a lot of things you love doing here, but I don't want to make it seem like you need to know English, by the way. I hope I didn't come across that way. What is that? Is there few um, but yeah, it, it's just an observation. It's not a critique. Uh, I just want to make that clear. Things you don't do when you visit France. And I really want to have this video help people enjoy their trip to France more because it's a fantastic place to visit. And my first don't for you is don't think the French are that stereotypical rude snob kind of thing because the French have been some of the most wonderful, hospitable, kind, helpful hosts we have ever visited. If you've watched our videos, you know I'm kind of a Francophile. I really love our time here in France. And the people are wonderful, but they get this horrible reputation mostly because of the wait staff in paris which has actually gotten better by the way and the thing is don't take that bad waiter in paris as a typical french person the french are awesome they are so helpful and kind i cannot tell you the times that locals have helped us by pointing us in the right direction telling us no this restaurant's nice but that restaurant's better you should have this wine instead of that wine we've had christmases with french friends we've visited french families around the world and the french are fantastic so don't think they're that stereotypical snob you hear about i mean i remember a time i we were in paris who have the reputation be the snobbiest of the snobs and we had liam in his little carriage back in the day and the metro worker wouldn't let us in and so the locals helped us carry the, the stroller over the barriers of the metro and then they scolded the metro workers it was amazing just how wonderful the people are here so please 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 don't think they're snobs they are awesome here I think that this, it might be, and it's not a good thing, but maybe people confuse the language barrier. Like, it, it is comparable to other places in Europe, I have found, and I mean more kind of central, northern Europe, um, that you might feel a little bit more isolated because English just is, is not as understood by the general population compared to other countries. And maybe people feel like that comes across as rude. And I and that's not a good thing, right? It, it, just because they don't speak English. Okay, and a way for you to get to know them and have them even more awesome to you is our second don't, and that is don't be afraid to try a little French. Now, I'm not saying you need to be fluent in French when you come here. That's ridiculous. It helps. Knowing a few words, merci, which is thank you, s'il vous plaît, which is please, oui, which is yes. It goes a long way to really open. Parlez, parlez-vous anglais? That that was one of the. I, I won't repeat my bathroom story. The people up and make them want to help you because you're like, look, you're really trying. And if you're from the U.S., 
and we have our own reputation of being bad tourists and not speaking languages and stuff like that, they like it even more and they respect it even more and you get better service. I cannot tell you how many five-star reviews I've gotten on Uber that make a point to say, hey, he tried to speak some French with me or how much free wine or free shots or free cider Question. we've got in our trips here in France. Comment. I, I, I might think it's like this that might be perceived as, as rudeness, okay? It's that I feel like English speakers are super used to other countries they go to to have some i'm going to the language again of having some understanding and so that might make them think going to france that there'll be some people who can understand and so when they talk to someone in france who knows this stereotype of you know lingua franca you know everyone knows english that when they come to you and to speak english it might come across as like oh you just expect us to know right and so then that that might be perceived perceived as rude from the French perspective, which might warrant a response that might seem rude from the English person perspective. But I think it's just a a uh, misunderstanding on on both sides. Because we try to speak just a little bit of French, it really does go a long way to really open up the people. So don't be afraid to learn a few words. And yes, if you butcher it, it's okay. They'll understand you and they'll be fun with you with it. So don't worry, okay? So those are my first two big don'ts I had to tell you. Now my third don't has to do with the- Okay, my bathroom story. I just, I went, okay, I was in a restaurant and I had to go to the bathroom and I needed to ask where the bathroom was. And I went up to the bar, the bar guy at the bar. And I'm like, I, I looked up what it was to ask, right? It was like something, Banya, uh, I forget. And the guy just straight up in the best English I've, I've, I've heard or, or in, in France just said downstairs to the right. And I thought it was funny because I know these stories must get old because they're the only few that I have to tell. But I just thought it was funny because of the immediate way he just responded in in English. I almost said American. Jesus. He's just like, oh, God, downstairs to the right. Kissing here. And that is, don't feel that you have to funny. kiss the guy that gives you the key to your Airbnb. Look, when you see French friends meet and French good acquaintances meet, they'll give bijou kisses on the cheeks. You're a tourist. You don't know them. You don't kiss them, okay? You tend to kiss people that are your friends, people that you know, maybe had a good time with, you built some kind of repertoire with. Those are the people that you'll give the kisses to, not the random people on the street. Because I've seen some tourists going, I'm not sure what to do here. Look at that lady, like, what the hell are you doing? Not the random people on the street, because I've seen some tourists going, I'm not sure what to do here. Look, it's okay. You don't have to kiss. They're cool with handshakes as well, all right? Now, my fourth don't for you when you come to France is don't forget to dress nicely. I mean, France is one of the capitals of, you know, haute couture and fashion in the world. And you do notice that the people do dress a bit nicer here. And as a tourist, if you dress nicer, the locals appreciate that. Now, I'm not going to say they're going to... I am I am the least fashionable person on the planet. I I go comfort over uh Fashion. treat you badly if you dress like a slob or something like that but you might notice a little bit better service a little bit nicer help or a little more people who are willing to come up and help if you dress a little bit nicer so you know what a little color coordination a little bit of more fitting clothes will go a long way remember you know you don't have to dress like you're a supermodel it's okay i mean i don't dress like a model very often but i do try to dress a little bit nicer when we come to france because it does go a long way with ingratiating yourselves with the locals oh, is that a mer his merch that's a nice a little uh, fleece there important one and that is or jacket don't think france is just paris the reason i'm filming this here in bordeaux is because everyone thinks oh i went to france because i, I was so close i'm on saint michel and i didn't go I we paris, didn't so i went to paris so i saw france france is different all over the country and you have very different experiences don't get me wrong i love paris if you watch our videos you know i love paris i would move there like that no questions asked because i love it so much but also the country Country has got such variety. Whether How beautiful Norway, that is! Coming down here to the Aquitaine region by Bordeaux. Oh my over God! Grenoble, the Riviera. You have so much variation in the country that don't just see Paris. Take the time and go explore this country, which leads into my next stone for you, and that is. I'll never forget just the most beautiful streets I, I remember. Okay. And I think we did, I think both times I went, we went in like August, September area. So uh, just beautiful streets, just like they seem like the perfect width, the 
The buildings on either side were always really cool. I'm talking more of like the more, more touristy areas of uh, of Paris. Okay, so I'm sure it's not all like this. That's all I've been really. But it's just such beautiful big streets that all kind of come in on each other. And when you're in a circle, you can look down. Them. It just a very nice feel to it. And I, that stuck with me. Don't forget reservations on the TGV beforehand. Look, if you're coming with Eurorail or Interrail, they don't come with reservations. And the fast trains here, you know, the ones that go like Having a car was nice. Hour, they are seat reservation required. So you're gonna have to get a seat reservation. And that means all the seats get reserved. So if there's no seat reservations left, that means the train is full and you can't take the train. So if you're gonna be traveling on a weekend or a holiday, make sure you're going online and buying your tickets early i mean we have the app and we have all of our tickets on the apps so we had all that bought before we came here okay so do have a heads up for that we went with a uh, a car a car the second time more recent time we 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 uh rented a car in heathrow airport took it on the uh channel on the train the channel tunnel went to uh, france to drive around europe right and you i would have i thought you know Oh yeah, their trains transportation is so much better, but we're more car centric. We must have better highways and stuff. Nope. They have better roads too. It, transportation which is overall high class, very nice. Another don't I have for you when you're going to be taking the trains is don't overpack. Look, on the TGVs and on the trains in France, there's not a ton of space, so you can't get that big, huge 900-pound suitcase anywhere because there's nowhere to put it. I would rather you did two carry-on size bags because you can fit those in the small spaces to put luggages in because, you know, like if you're on the trains in Germany or in the Netherlands, there's that big space above your seat. They don't have that big space above your seat. It might be at the end of the car or in the middle of the car. There's not always a ton of space, so don't overpack when you come to France. I mean, you can always buy stuff when you're here, here, but just know that you don't need to overpack when you come because you're not gonna have a ton of space not actually not just at the in the trains but also in the hotels and stuff like that it's gonna be a smaller spaces and when you're going around this beautiful gorgeous country my next don't for you is don't think that local French food is the same everywhere I mean don't get me wrong everybody loves a steak fleet right and everybody loves the escargot and everybody loves the cofita canade the duck but the thing is is all the regions here in Eesh. France have their own flavor Flavor, right? If you're going to Normandy. It's not a wine country. It's cider country. The apples that are there, right? You're going to have that here in, in Bordeaux. It's more about Ooh. meat and the Bordelais sauce. And you're going to have, I mean, we're by the sea. So you've got fantastic oysters that are here. If you're going to Strasbourg, you might see a little you know German my opinion on oysters. in with the food and the local food. So make sure when you try local French food, don't just try the famous ones you've heard about before, but ask the locals, hey, what is typically from Bordeaux? What's typically from Toulouse? What's typically from Nantes. Do that and you're going to find a much more enriching tummy experience when you do come here. And speaking of those meals when you do come here, my next deal for you is don't expect to have an early dinner or a late lunch because a lot of the restaurants their kitchens will close from 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Okay, So if you're a late luncher, you like to have dinner like my dad at 5 p.m. you're going to be out of luck unless you're going to a really touristy place and you don't want that you want the real deal and they don't start serving till seven or eight o'clock at night also if you're going to be on a weekend like a friday or saturday night i do recommend you book reservations for the place you want to eat because the french like to go out and eat on the weekends as well so you want to make sure you have that now another tone i have to do with the food is something that caleb wanted to make sure i warned you about and that is don't expect to find frog legs everywhere in france look the locals don't quite eat the frog is that legs frog like legs? they used to and probably if you do get frog legs, they're probably not frogs from France. And legs expect to find frog legs everywhere in France. Look, the is that one? Locals oh. don't quite eat the frog legs like they used to. And probably if you do get frog legs, they're probably not frogs from France anyway. Just giving you a heads up for that one. And speaking of fried frogs, hey, my next don't for you has to do with the beach. If you're going to be going to the beach, whether you're here by Bordeaux or if you're going to the Riviera, wherever you're going to go in beach season, don't wait to try to find a big open spot for you and all of your friends to sit at. The beaches get packed here. And so when you see a little area go for it put your stuff down and grab it eventually maybe those people might leave 
but it's not like there's gonna be big open spaces. So just be used to not a lot of personal space when you're at the beach. And some other don'ts I'd say I should throw in with the beach. I'd imagine the, you know, Mediterranean, Biscay, English Channel Coast are all a little different. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I would imagine. There, one, don't gawk if anybody's topless around. I mean, no one's gawking at you in your board shorts, right? Also, if you're going to be going to Nice, the beach there, or other beaches, make sure you check beforehand what are the beaches like. Is it a sand beach or is it a stone beach? Because I know a lot of people go to Nice and they hit the beach there, and it's a stone beach. So make sure you got some water shoes so you don't walk around going, ow, 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 when you're going around. Okay? My feet... All right, Rhode Island coastline and my, a lot of childhood spent on my feet have been so barnacle and sharp rock torn up that I, I think I don't even need sandals anymore. I just have permanent sandals okay now my next don't for you has to do with culture here in france and what you have to realize is don't think french culture and the culture you're going to see here in france is limited to Napoleon? museums like seeing the mona lisa and stuff like that france has a lot of layers of history here you want to see ancient roman ruins you can see the aqueducts you can see the bridges you can see the the forums and stuff like that they have that here you can see that around the country but the thing is they have more than that you can see whether you go see the Theaters in Chartres and other places, or maybe you want to see 20,000 year old cave painting in this car. I mean, there's tons and tons of options, and yes, I know I butcher it, but look. I don't think you can go into the actual cave. I think they have a replica. The locals are okay with you, but I understand. Figure it out. They're really nice about it, but there's so many layers of culture and history to see when you come here that it's not just an art museum trip. You have the architecture and the churches and the cities and the gates and all kinds of great stuff. Going to Avignon, going to Grenoble, coming here, you're going to see a lot of culture and it's some of it's, yes, inside in the fabulous art museums, but also sometimes it's outside and taking in the cities or the countryside. Where's Napoleon's tomb? And in the villages and just the history that's happened here in France. You'll love it. Now, my next note for you is don't worry about being a little late if you're here in France. If you're going to be going to somebody's house for dinner, they kind of expect you to be a little late, just so you know. And you're meeting your friends. If they're not there right on time, it's okay. Now, the trains and buses and stuff, yeah, you got to be on time for that. But in general, France is a little more laissez-faire with the time frame kind of stuff. Guys, just like with, uh, like, northern european houses like when you get into belgium or definitely the netherlands i keep that's like the third voice crack of this video or denmark and then definitely sweden or of you know the front face of the building is kind of like a step triangle up to the top and i i've said how i want to know where that originated just like i want to know where this style of like classic when you think of like a classic medieval house or early renaissance house I, i'm not sure that the time period it came up but I'm curious to know, like, who first pioneered this style of uh, wooden plaster type building? So, right on. France is a little more laissez-faire with the time frame kind of stuff here. I mean, it's not quite as laissez-faire as like Spain and Portugal, but it's not like going to Germany where you need to be five minutes early to actually be on time. Right it's on time. More relax calm down and and that also takes you to the fact when you're actually ordering your food and stuff like that don't get in a hurry all right now one thing where i think you should worry though is don't trust anyone that's asking you to sign a petition or there's begging or anything like that because you will see a lot of begging here in france i mean not all over the place you'll see a ton in paris you'll see a lot of ladies coming up wanting to sign petitions mostly in paris and stuff like that but anytime you are at a you know tourist destination make sure you don't stop paying attention to where your watch wallet phone are because there are a lot of pickpockets here i'm not gonna lie about that that's one of the downfalls of france it's so fantastic that tourists are always here and Whenever there's always tourists, there's always going to be pickpockets, Makes scam sense. artists, stuff like that. So do have a heads up. And also, watch our video on the scams of Paris to give you a lot of ideas of the scams you might see, not just in Paris, but all over France. And speaking of all over France, my next don't for you is don't try to see all of France in one visit. Look, France is a... So we went La Havre. We stayed a night there, I remember, on our way to uh, Omaha Beach. So went Channel to... What is it? There down here and then up there and then we went into through belgium to amsterdam and then down through germany and it's off the screen into austria and then through Liechtenstein into switzerland and we must have taken this road i'm guessing 
up to Paris. But uh, I wanted to see the Maginot line, and we did, and it was it was kind of sketchy. Because it's not like the Maginot line is French defenses, World War One to World War II, uh, where they, they had fortifications. And I thought it'd be more of a touristy thing, but of course, it, it's a giant line of fortifications, so they're going to be dotted along the border, and it was just us, and we just kind of like went on top, and there were these spike things, and... I'm like, what if there's an unexploded mine or something? Super large country, especially for Europe. And when you come here... Yeah, it's, France is so awesome. You have the Alps, huge mountains. Um, you have, you know, beautiful inland. You have Mediterranean Sea. You have Bay of Biscay, English Channel. Just in such a small country. By, I know in Europe, it's, it's one of the biggest. Um, but still, for its size, just so much variety visit look france is a super large country especially for europe and when you come here you're going to realize that man even though those trains get me from bordeaux to paris in two hours that doesn't mean you should go just bordeaux to paris there's so many different regions there's so much kind of uniqueness in each of those regions here in france that maybe you, you just pick a couple regions when you come here don't try to do it all like i usually say look a nice first visit is paris then go to normandy in the loire valley next time coming down here to the Aquitaine region and go to Bordeaux, maybe go over to the, you know, Provence and see that. And another trip, go see the north. You know, there's a lot of different options you can see. And don't try to do it all because you'll burn yourself out. Go, go, go. Be like the French. Take it slow, relax, and enjoy and take it all in. Maybe stay at a Geet, like a farmhouse kind of BNB kind of setting when you're here. It's a really, really great experience, but you don't want to do it all. I mean, I might be, you know, biased and want you to come back to France a lot of times, but honestly, there's a reason why we keep coming back to France because there's so much to see and there's such distinctness in the regions. Coming to Bordeaux is very different than going to Lyon, which is very different than Strasbourg, which is very different than Nantes and Rennes. And you have all these things. So get out and explore and see different regions because you can have a great time all over, but a really different time all over. Now, when you are going around to all these different regions, one thing is similar everywhere, and that is the plat du jour or the fixed price menus. And my don't for that is don't skip out on lunch when you come to France because that's where you have the deals, the lunch deals where, yeah, you could get the st a starter, a main, and a dessert for a set price they'll have discount prices at lunch so you can have that really fancy expensive meal at a much lower price at lunch so you can save some bucks when you're here so my last don't for france i'm going to go with you here in bordeaux is don't expect to do much on sundays in terms of shopping look sundays all the stores are closed all the offices are closed and so you're gonna have to realize that it's gonna like be Chick a great day for tourism and eating on sunday because the museums most likely will be open hey the louvre is closed on tuesdays not sundays people you're gonna have the restaurants open so you could eat and enjoy that way but just realize you're shopping and you're souvenir hunting you're gonna have a tough time on sundays anyway sounds like the police are ready for me to get out of here so if you want to learn more about visiting Fantasty France. Check out some of our other videos. Five things you love and hate about visiting France. Ten things that shock tourists when they come to France. Maybe you want to know about here in Bordeaux. We've got the don'ts and shocks of Bordeaux. Well, you should know before you come to Paris. Scams you'll Great see video. in France and Paris. All on our website at waltersworld.com or search on our YouTube channel. You can find it in there. Search anything France, but Walters World with it, and I'm sure we'll pop up. And I wish you a great time, but don't worry, you will because France is fantastic. Au revoir de Bordeaux. Bois de Bordeaux. I, I'm terrible. Heard about before. Uh, great video. Really interesting. I would love to go back um, and spend more time uh, slowly going through rather than just, you know, hopping around Europe quickly. It was really cool. Um, would appreciate any comments on the video, guys. Hope you all are doing well, and I will see you guys next time, all right? But if any French people are watching, if you agree or disagree with anything you said, extra curious to hear that. But again, any comments appreciated. Bye, guys. See you next time.